Today, we're going to be talking about how Osmodius rules and conquered the Lust Ring. This is the fifth in an eight-part series. There's a link to the playlist for the other parts in a pinned comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next parts, where we discuss the Sloth and Envy Rings, as well as how Lucifer rules Hell as a whole. Osmodius is the prince who has had the most screen time in the series, and has quickly become integral to the story, what with his relationship to Fizzaroli, which according to the 2022 trailer seems to be a much bigger part of the series. The Lust Ring is the fifth ring of hell and has a dark blue sky. This dark blue sky gives the impression that it's always nighttime, and it appears to be raining at all times as well. Lust is one ring below greed, which is said by Blitz to be the nearest ocean from the Pride Ring. It is not entirely clear how the rings are stacked on top of each other, but I believe it's possible that each ring is a mass of land so far above the one below it that an atmosphere with its own color sky is able to develop, obscuring the bottom of the ring above it. I think we can occasionally see past the haze of these atmospheres, such as at night in the Greed Ring. What appears to be stars, I believe to be the glowing rocks at the bottom of the Gluttony Ring, which is just above Greed. With that in mind, the actual color of the sky may be influenced by the bottom of the ring above it. With the Greed Ring having an ocean, I think it is possible that it is constantly leaking into the Lust Ring, giving it the impression that it is always raining. There doesn't seem to be a flooding issue in the Lust Ring, and because of that, I think it has a pretty quick draining process into the ring below it. Envy, which many fans believe to be entirely an ocean, and would have no problem pulling up the excess water as it drops from the Greed Ring Ocean through Lust and into the Envy Ring. In the Lust Ring, we see a diverse array of species, both as tourists and working locals. A lot of the local workers appear to be imported from other rings as exotic entertainment, with the primary species of this ring being Succubus and Incubus. Succubus and Incubus have varying definitions, with the most common today meaning a sexual demon that is either female, Succubus, or male, Incubus. In other cases, they don't distinguish between sex or gender, but instead indicate whether or not the demon is sexually active or passive. Regardless of their definitions, I'll continue to use the term succubus to describe all of succubus and incubus kind in the show, the same way I might use the word man to describe all of mankind. With it being constantly raining in the Lust Ring, the life there would have evolved to either be comfortable in the rain or to seek shelter, such as in caves. With the dark sky, there would already be very little light, making hiding in caves easy to navigate for creatures evolved in that dark. This is why succubus seem to look somewhat like sexy bats, especially with their wings. It is uncertain if Osmodius is a fallen angel in the series, who fell from heaven with Lucifer and the other princes, or if he is a naturally occurring powerful native demon, which we know to be a thing in the Helliverse. Regardless of when he took over the Lust Ring, I imagine he chose this ring for himself partially because the succubus, who may have evolved to be considered sexually desirable across multiple species as part of a hunting tactic. Osmodius would begin to reshape the species, perhaps giving it more human intelligence, and would use them to lure humans on Earth, with the succubus having the naturally evolved talent to suck out sexual energy from their prey from back when they were a predatory, animalistic species. Osmodius would then begin to reshape the Lust Ring to be a place where these predators are put on stage for everyone to enjoy and for him to profit off of. This would result in the bulk of the Lust Ring becoming one giant nightclub district, which relied on the tourism of the other rings in order to grow financially. Osmodius likely had the easiest time taking over his ring than any other prince, quickly finding a species to put front and center that contributed to his plans to conquer Earth, brought in customers from across all of Hell, and perfectly played into his theme of lust. The succubus already enjoying enticing other demons sexually as part of their hunting tactics are also given something of a celebrity status. While Veroska is an extreme example as a famous pop star, succubus are likely easily made to accept the bad system they live in with a sense of fame coming from social media, adult films, and regular live performances in addition to their actual work missions up on Earth. I don't think that means that the succubus want to be sexually enslaved in the way that they are, as even characters who are extremely sexual like Angel can feel imprisoned in this sort of servitude. Like with most species, they are given just enough of what they want to placate them and keep them maintaining the system that ultimately only benefits Osmodius and the other princes. Despite Osmodius' lust theme, the drama bubbling up around him appears to be about his image being tarnished by his and Fizzarale's feelings for each other. When they are first introduced, it's to mock Moxie's love song, acting as if his sentimental feelings were getting in the way of the nightclub's sexy vibe. By the end of the episode, Fizzarelli and Asmodeus are seen canoodling all lovey-dovey-like, and in the 2022 trailer, we see that the newspapers are portraying them as hypocrites because of it. Fizzarelli is a sex symbol in Hell, with a line of love robots made in his image for Hell to purchase. 
When Osmodeus and Fizzarali first met, I have no doubt that their relationship was as carnal and depraved as they make it out to be. But as time goes on, people settle into a relationship and feelings begin to develop. This doesn't have to be at the expense of their sexual attraction, which is the point of Millie and Moxie's subplot in Episode 7. But Osmodeus and Fizzarelli cannot comprehend this concept, and thus they define their relationship by their initial sexual attraction that brought them together. The irony is just that they genuinely like each other now. The 2022 trailer gives the impression that Fizz and Osmodeus will have an ongoing plot this season, and with Osmodeus looking nervous at someone seeing him get hugged by Fizzaroli, I think he might end up breaking things off with Fizzaroli in order to maintain his public image as a single man who only cares about carnal desire. In addition to ruling the Lust Ring as a prince, Osmodeus is also a king in the Ars Goetia, though a king in the Ars Goetia is of lower rank than a prince of the Seven Rings in Hell's hierarchy. If Stolas is any indication, the Ars Goetia are largely focused with trying to take over the Earth, and Osmodeus is well known to play a part in that. While the princes could all be involved in trying to conquer Earth in addition to the Ars Goetia, Osmodeus' work there seems tied more to the Ars Goetia than the Seven Princes, as Stolas is able to quickly pull out an Osmodeus grimoire from his Ars Goetia library in order to get an Osmodian crystal in the Season 2 premiere. Osmodian crystals are of course made by Osmodius and given to Succubus, allowing them to travel up to Earth with ease. Stolas seems to be preparing an Osmodian crystal to give to Blitz so he and his crew can continue their business, and return Stolas's grimoire to him. Because of this, the work for Succubus going up to Earth to seduce humans and push them into carnal fervor seems related more to Osmodius's duties in the Ars Goetia than as one of the Seven Princes. Paimon is said, in the real-life writings of him, to be the most loyal of the Ars Goetia to Lucifer, and it would make sense that as the King of Hell, Lucifer is trying to conquer Earth, and thus the Ars Goetia, particularly Paimon, are trying to help him. In addition to Lucifer, I also previously theorized that Satan is involved with the possible wars they are inciting and influencing on Earth. These two are often seen as the same characters in many schools of thought, and while they are distinct characters in the show, it would make sense that they are something of a team working together to conquer Earth. I believe they would create the Ars Goetia for this purpose, being a second hierarchy in Hell, helping to manage the many legions of demons to best take over Earth. If Osmodius is a fallen angel like he's generally thought of in real life mythos, he likely rebelled with Lucifer and the other princes of the Deadly Sins who worked together to conquer Hell. Not all who rebelled in Heaven would be interested in conquering Earth, however, as demons like Belphegor are described in real life writings as only rebelling in Heaven because they did not want to work. As such, he would likely have no interest in working more to help conquer the Earth. As the Prince of Sloth, Belphegor probably just wants to stay in the Sloth Ring and be lazy. Osmodius being interested in conquering Earth for his own reasons likely joined the Ars Goetia as a king, making him additionally useful to Lucifer and Satan outside of being a Prince of the Seven Rings. I discussed previously how Beelzebub could potentially also beat Baal in the Ars Goetia, but outside of those two, we don't have any reason to think that the other princes like Mammon or Leviathan are interested in conquering Earth either. With Paimon being considered more loyal to Lucifer than Osmodius, it may be that Osmodius is just happy ruling over his own land in Hell and only join the Ars Goetia for his own benefit, spreading his idealized lustful world to that of humans. But these are just my theories. Let me know yours in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for the next parts of the series on the Envy and Sloth Rings. Both are already available now in our Early Access YouTube Membership section. Just click the Join button below to sign up for $4.99 a month for Early Access to these and other videos. See you guys next time.